A very good evening, morning, and afternoon to all those who have joined us today. We have another interesting workshop lined up for today, and it's a very interesting topic, specifically for me, because being a you know a business owner, I can completely relate to it because ninety percent of my team is full of designers, and it when it comes to you know taking crucial decision, it becomes very important to understand if my team you know knows the implications of it. and knows the implications the business is going to have of the decisions they're going to take so the today's workshop is around business of design and we have supaka uh, who is a product designer based in nigeria he's a co-founder at spiri if i'm pronouncing it correct uh, a startup which is helping businesses build better products by enhancing the voice of customer through insights and feedbacks He's also a co-founder at Untitled Designers, a community of African designers building a sustainable design ecosystem. He thinks about the community and reads design leaderships and life hack books in his spare time. So, Chukwuka, the stage is all yours. Thank you, thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're joining us from. Uh, so I am going to be sharing my screen. And I'm going to walk us through what I have today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to um, drop them in the chat. And once we're done, we will take those questions and you know just have a conversation. I will also try to make this um, as interactive as I can. So uh, if you have answers to some of the questions that I may ask, you can drop them um, in the chat as well. All right, let's get into it. Okay, uh, so our topic today is very interesting: um, business and design, right? Measuring design impact. Um, as designers, we love to push pixels. We love to be creative. Um, you know, we love to do really cool stuff. But at the same time, you don't want to neglect. The business part, and you also want to, in as much as you you're doing something beautiful, you're doing something great, you're doing something creative. You also want to make sure that you're providing value on the other end, right? When I started out learning design, the first thing I learned was that um, design was at the intersection between business and customers, right? And the whole idea of that is that design is able to drive. value or to provide value for both the customers in terms of helping them you know achieve their goals in terms of helping them do the things that they want to do right um, and also provide value for the business right in terms of providing money for the business providing um, um serving the goals right or the objectives of the business and so today we're going to be looking at some of the things that you ought to know to help you change your mindset so you can start also thinking about the business um part as you design uh so i have been introduced uh she has said practically everything in my spare time by the way you can call me chooks chooks is a shorter form of my name um if chukoka is a bit difficult to pronounce i am a product designer um and i am co-founder of spire it's pronounced spire in my spare time yeah i like to think about the community um i like to think about how we can you know grow the community how we can make the design community better how we can make the design industry better um in nigeria in africa and in the world at large um i love reading books mostly leadership books design books and life hack books Um, I think there's something very interesting when you're able to make your life as easy as possible and as simple as possible, and I think life hack books help you to do that. Um, I am a mentor on ADP List and Design Lab, so you can always find me there if you need to have further conversations with me, or you have questions, or you think I'm the right person to give you answers. So, uh, our gist for today, the main things we'll be looking at, right? We'll be talking about strategy we'll be talking about outcomes we'll be talking about outputs we will be talking about activities 
impact and metrics. And when it comes to design and business, these are like very important things that we need to know, very important concepts that we need to understand to be able to help us deliver appropriate value to business as designers. Now, before I start, why should we care, right? Um, why should any of us care about business? You know, why should we not just, you know, keep creating pretty things, uh, whether they are um, useful or not, whether they are effective or not? Like, why should we care? You know, why is it important, right? Um, and the first reason why we should care, I mean, there are, there are tons of reasons why we should care, right? But the first reason why we should care is career success, more career success, right? So designers who are business savvy, who understand business, who understand what it means to bring value to the business, who are able to tie their work to business um, outcomes, right? Who are able to measure or draw a straight line from their decisions as designers to the impact that it has on business, have a tremendous success in our industry. They are the ones that have like really long careers. I, I take some time on LinkedIn to check out, you know, people who have worked in different companies over a long period of time. And something that is very common is the fact that they understand, you know, the business side of things. And once you're able to understand the business side of things, you become an indispensable part of a business or an organization, right? Now, the second reason why you should care is a seat at the table, right? So as long as I can remember, we have been glamouring for a seat at the table. There have been different takes. There have been a lot of conversations around this. We've had a lot of people saying, designers need a seat at the table. We need to be involved in strategic decisions. We need to be, you know, um, brought into um, business decisions when they've been made, we need to be made aware, but why do we need to be made aware, right? And if we eventually get a seat at the table, we will be able to perform, right? Will we be able to bring value to that table, right? So this is why we should care about learning about business, right? Um, we, need to, we need to learn more about the language of business. Um, there's a book called Articulating Design Decisions, right? you need to be able to articulate your design decisions to different audiences. So as designers, we solve problems for people. Now, part of our audience that we solve problems for, right, is the business. And in the business, you have different people. You have the accountants, you have marketing, you have sales, you know, you have the finance guys. Now, you need to, each of these people, right, they understand, they speak different languages. And so if you want to convince them of the value that design brings, if you want to convince them of the value that your design decisions bring, you need to be able to speak their language, right? And they all speak, I mean, even as they speak different languages, they have one language in common, and that language in common is money, right? At the end of the day, money or number of customers or number of users, right? So, um, you want to be able to speak the language of business with them when you are sitting at that table that we are all glamouring for, right? Third reason why you should care is because we need more design and product-led companies, right? Let's face it, besides the big, the big companies, right? Besides the Facebook, the Google, the Amazon, you know, the Airbnb, the Microsoft, the Apple, we need more companies that are design-led or product-led. We need more design founders. Um, building companies that are changing the world, right? That keep changing the world, right? But to achieve this, right? We as designers, we also need to understand business. If you don't understand business, you can't build a successful company, right? And then the fourth reason why we should care is to gain a respect. Um, we're kind of late to the party in terms of being at at the table, right? Having a seat at the table. And we're sort of like the new kids on the block. And typically nobody has respect for the new kid on the block because you need to end that respect, right? And so for us to be able to end that respect that we are so much glamouring for and we're fighting for, we have a lot of catching up to do. And, you know, if, if we were to be listened to, and these are the reasons why we should care, 
about business and we should care about understanding business and knowing business. All right, so let's go in, let's dive in. Let's start with strategy. What is strategy, right? This is a term that is thrown around in companies, right? When you have VPs, directors, ETC sitting down to make decisions, they throw the word strategy around a lot, right? But what is it really? And I have a couple of, I have a definition here. I'm just going to read this out. Now, strategy is the general plan to achieve one or more long-term or overall goals under conditions of uncertainty, right? Strategy is important because the resources available to achieve goals are usually limited. Strategy generally involves setting goals and priorities, determining actions to achieve the goals and mobilizing resources to execute the actions. So in short, right, strategy bridges the gap between where we are now and where we want to be, right? So if you want to be able to speak their language, you need to understand what strategy means to the company. You need to understand the kind of strategy. Depending on the company, the industry, they all have different strategies, right? They all have, depending on the person also who is um, leading the efforts in strategy, they all have different strategies. So you want to be able to understand, you want to be able to contribute, you want to be able to have conversations, right, when it comes to strategy. You need to have a clear picture of what the strategy is so that when you're making decisions on projects, it is easy for you to say, oh, this is this is what we talked about. This is where we are. This is where we want to be. These decisions that I am making, how does it take us where we want to be, right? Does it take us from point A to point A1 to point A2 to point B, right? Does it, does it help us make progress in the direction that we want to go? Next, let's talk about outcomes. Now, outcomes are measurable changes in human behavior, right? Now, we see these changes when we give the outputs we've created to our users and customers. Now, we're going to define outputs in a bit. But outcomes are the goals, right? Why are we doing this in the first place, right? Um, what value is this going to give to our customers? What value is this going to provide to our users, to people who pay us money, to people who use our products, right? It could be a change in their social behavior. Take, for instance, the introduction of Twitter, Instagram, you know, Facebook and the likes TikTok, right? And the likes, and it has massively influenced the behavior of people online, right? TikTok, for example, you know, people create videos, people have a lot of fun. Um, it has gotten to a point where people take out time to learn challenges, right? I mean, there was a time when people did not really care for challenges or people were not really into, you know, learning challenges, but now, you have young people, older people, kids, everybody, you know, learning challenges on TikTok, right? That is a change in behavior, right? Talk about personal life. You have products that have changed, that have caused a change in people's behaviors in their personal lives, right? For example, take a health or a fitness app, right? One of the one of the the um, changes that a fitness app can do is probably have someone you know become more active in the gym right because maybe they provide them with a 12-week plan to you know bulking up or losing weight or things like that right and then you have them going to the gym maybe twice a week or you know um, thrice a week and this is somebody who has not been going to the gym before right but the person starts going to the gym because he or she uses that product that is a change in human behavior. So ultimately, we want to make sure that whatever it is that we are working on at the end of the day is able to cause a change in human behavior. That is how we know that we have offered value or we have provided something of value, right? It can also be work life. Take, for example, Figma. Before Figma came, a lot of us used Photoshop, you know, Sketch, Adobe, right? But today, Figma is adopted in, I, I, don't, I don't know the figure, but virtually, I mean, a lot of companies 
whenever I see job ads, everybody mentions Figma. So it means that, I don't know, I'm trying a rough figure out here, but it means that maybe 90% of companies in the world have migrated to Figma. That is a change in work behavior, right? People were used to Sketch, people were used to, you know, um, Photoshop, people were not used to online life in the moment collaborations, right? But Figma came and changed that, right? Myro came and changed online collaboration, right? So you have amazing products like that. Um, now, outcomes, like I said, outcomes are the value that we're delivering, right? So outcomes tell us when and if we've delivered something valuable or not, right? So how do you know if this thing that you've worked on, how do you know if the decision that you've made is valuable, right? It is on the outcomes. And then we have outputs. Now outputs are what we create. These are our products, services, features, contents, policies, deliverables at work, etc. It is what our customers buy, use, or consume and consume from us, right? So depending on who your, your consumer or your customer is, um, if your customer is a business, say in a team, we have different deliverables as designers, right? We have things like customer journey maps. We have things like empathy maps. We have things like um, an affinity map. Those are deliverables at work, right? Those are outputs. Right. Um, for customers, on the other hand, people who buy things from us, you know, it could be a finished product, right? It could be an app, it could be a web app, it could be a website, you know, um, for for services, right? Services, features, content, etc. Those are outputs that we create. Outputs are not the same things as outcomes, right? Outputs are the things that we can see and we can experience, right? So we can see um, a customer journey map, for example, right? We can see a mobile app, for example, and we can experience using the mobile app, right? But outcomes are what we get out of it, right? Why is this thing valuable to us? Why is Facebook valuable to people? Why is WhatsApp valuable to people? Why is FaceTime valuable to people, right? Um, next, we have activities, and this is pretty simple. An activity is something you do, or just the state of doing, right? So, um, when you are having a collaborative brainstorming session, that is an activity. When you are on Figma pushing pixels, that is an activity, right? And then we have metrics. Now, metrics are numbers that tell you important information about a process on that question. Um, they tell you accurate measurements about how the process is functioning and provide base for you to suggest improvement, right? Metrics help us track, monitor, and assess the success or failure of various business processes. Now, again, something that is very, very important to businesses or to companies is metrics. Metrics is really, really important, right? If you can't measure it, you can't improve it, right? This was a quote by Peter Drog Drogher. If you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So whenever you are working on a product, whenever you're working on a feature, whenever you're asked to do anything, you have to ask questions, the important questions, questions like, what does success mean for us doing this? How are we going to measure success? right? You need to come up with things that you're going to track, metrics that you're going to track. Are you going to track bounce rate? Are you going to track drop-off? Are you going to track um, um, checkouts, successful payments? What exactly are you tracking, right? Are you tracking traffic coming, you know, um, traffic in, on, on your website? Um, are you tracking signups? You know, are you tracking... Um, successful onboarding, like what exactly are you tracking? You need to figure that out to be able to design properly, right? For those things, so that those things can be tracked um, efficiently and effectively, right? And again, if you don't track it, I mean, you can't, you can't improve what you don't track, right? It means that you don't even know what's going on. And so how can you even improve it? If you don't know what's going on, you need to know where you are at and you need to know where you want to be 
and then you need to figure out how to get there, right? So yeah, um, let's look at the difference between outcomes and outputs. Outcomes are the measures of success of our outputs, right? So um, we spend our days doing all these things at work. We spend our days, um, you know, speaking to speaking to customers. Um, we speak to twenty customers. We come back. We do analysis. Um, we do affinity mapping. We do all these time-consuming things, right? We figure out use cases, we figure out features, we figure out user stories. Um, we work on the product itself, we ship, but how do we know that all these things that we've done is valuable, right? And that is through measuring our outcomes, right? So outcomes are the measures of success for our outputs. Now outcomes also create autonomy and accountability. So if everybody is in alignment, uh, we respect what the outcomes are for the business or for a product or for a feature, right? Or for a service. It's easier to allow teams figure out their own way to meet those outcomes, right? And so it allows for more autonomy. It gives people, individuals, teams more autonomy to figure out different ways they can um, contribute to that outcome. And it also creates accountability, right? It um, presents the opportunity to be able to measure and track and teams or individuals are able to know when they are meeting business goals or business outcomes or customer outcomes or customer goals or not. And they are able to adjust accordingly, right? And, you know, go back to the drawing board and figure out something else and basically reiterate, right? Um, thirdly, outcomes, um, outcomes are, you know, things that are both meaningful to the business and measurable by the team, right? So, um, when you are working on a project or you're working in a team, um, you need to figure out what your outcomes are for a specific, um, feature or project, right? Or service, whatever it is that you guys are doing at the time. Right, and it has to be meaningful to both the business and the team. So it has to, it has to tie to the business, to the business goals as well. So the business has to look at these outcomes and say, "Oh yeah, we understand this. This is helpful to us. This is valuable to us. This is important to us." Right. It also has to communicate value and meaning to the team as well. So the team is able to look at it and understand what they're trying to achieve, and understand how to measure it, how to go about it. So there is alignment between the business and the team, and nobody is sort of operating or working in um, isolation, right? Um, outcomes also enable us to work backwards to the solution. So when you have a clear picture of what the outcome or the goal is, then it's a lot easier to work backwards and figure out a solution, right? It is not entirely, it's not, effective to go from solution to outcomes. You need to understand where you want to go. You need to understand where you want to be, right? You need to understand what you want to achieve. And then you start to figure out how it is you want to achieve this, right? You start to think about the decisions that you have to make to help you achieve this, right? You have to think about decisions that you've made in the past that have been good or bad and things like that. Um, lastly, outcomes are solution agonistic. So when you are aligned on outcomes, it is not dependent on a specific solution, right? And that is, I mean, one of the things that um, Lean preaches is the fact that you can quickly iterate and experiment with solutions or ideas, right? And the most important thing is to understand that, hey, this is what we want to achieve how we're going to get here, how we're going to achieve this is solely flexible, right? And so that is why it's solution agonistic, right? So take for instance, um, if an outcome for us is to uh, provide better, more, better in-depth knowledge 
for people in the pro app community we can go about this in so many ways right we can for example organize a webinar that's one way to go about it we could um, have a physical class that's one way to go about it right we could have a blog where we write things we could have a podcast these are different ways that we can go about this right but all these solutions eventually add up to your outcome now let's look at outputs so outputs are not necessarily measurable right so you can't i mean how are you going to measure customer journey maps by right? how many of them you create at work nobody cares <laughs> right um when, when was the last time you had a an evaluation and you were asked how many empathy maps did you create this month for last month eh? nobody cares right so why should we even bother measuring outputs anyway right um, outputs also focuses on deliverables now if we're too fixated on outputs as designers then we just focus on our deliverables we just focus on our maps we just focus on um, our pretty screens we just focus on our prototypes right it is not healthy for the business it's not healthy for us as designers right so um you want to change we want to change our mindset from an output driven mindset to an outcome driven mindset because only when you have an outcome driven mindset are you able to ask why 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 you know and one of the qualities of a great designer is the ability to keep asking why 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 right um so yeah um, outputs focus on just deliverables and on their own outputs do not necessarily solve the problem right so um, if you don't know about the problem that you're solving if you don't know how you're going to measure if you've solved that problem then how do you know the outputs that will help you solve that problem right so outputs on their own are not necessary do not necessarily solve any problems at all right and a clear example is maybe do it when you're writing like a case study right and um there's, there's like a general feedback you get when you say put a persona in a case study you're asked what value exactly did this contribute or provide to the overall process if it did not provide any i mean we all know personas and we all know that at some point we do personas but if it doesn't provide any value besides the fact that we want to know who our customers are then maybe it shouldn't even be in your portfolio maybe it's not solving any problem at all right all right so um let's talk about business outcomes we're going to talk about <clears throat> so when it comes to outcomes <clears throat> you have business outcomes and you have design or ux outcomes right so starting with business outcomes um these are results the organization wants to achieve to keep the organization growing for example an increase in subscription retention by 20 percent this quarter right increase in new insurance subscriptions by 15 percent this year that is a business outcome notice how it is very explicit and has something you can track right so this there's like a number you can track that is quantifiable um it's it's quantifiable right enough for you to track right and there's a clear picture of where you want to be maybe where you are at and where you want to be right now business outcomes are, are the easy part to achieving a business goal However, they don't necessarily end up with a better experience for our users. Now, it is very important that we understand business outcomes, right? I remember I said we have business outcomes and UX outcomes. And it's very important that we that you know we understand business outcomes and understand that business outcomes are what businesses care about. Right. Now, sometimes business outcomes do not necessarily care about our customers or the experience of our customers right and so it is up to us um who care who are the advocates of the business of the customers to change not change to interpret right or redefine yeah define is the right word or redefine those business outcomes to customer outcomes 
right? So that helps make the lives of our customers better. And at the end of the day, it ties back to the business outcomes. And so there is sort of a direct impact of design to business, right? Um, like I said, business, so business outcomes make great results, but they don't exactly make great goals, right? So um, they don't really, they don't necessarily care about the customers, right? And this sort of buttresses my point also when I said we need more design or product-led companies, we need more design founders, but you need to understand business as well, because then when you're coming up with your business goals or your business outcomes, you're able to frame them in a way that it also cares for your customers and not how, um, not your typical standard, you know, um, business goals or outcomes that do not really care about your customers. So UX outcomes. Now UX outcomes take into account the experiences of our customers and the after consequences to them, right? This is where we ask, if we do a fantastic job delivering this product service or feature, how will we improve someone's life? So this is where you take the business outcomes and the business goals and you try to redefine them in something that makes sense and makes a case design-wise, right? And then you're able to approach it and suffer it in a way that it provides value to the customer, it improves their lives, and it also provides value to the business and improves the life of the business as well. And so uh, we have the difference between business outcomes and UX outcomes. We have business outcomes being inward-facing and employee-centric. So you have how business outcomes are measured is tied to our jobs, right? Our job roles, so our job descriptions. And you basically use the performance of employees to judge contributions to business outcomes, right? But UX outcomes are user-centered, customer-facing, and service-centric. It means that we are measuring based on the customers or we are measuring with the customers or using the customers to measure, right? We're using the customers' behaviors, we're using the customers' usage, we're using the customers' um, um, you know, returning back to measure, right? Uh, business outcomes look at a small size of the problem, while UX outcomes look more holistically and comprehensive. So when sometimes when you're able to redefine business outcomes properly into UX outcomes, you even see more opportunities for the business, right? You see more opportunities to create more impact or to bring more impact to the business, right? So UX outcomes are perfect for, you know, having a more broader holistic view, more comprehensive view. Um, the next thing for business outcomes is that they measure business ROI, right? Return on investment for the business, right? But outcomes measure impacts, how we improve people's lives. If you're able to measure, the, if you're able to measure impacts, right? Improve people's lives. It is definitely coming back to the business and it is definitely going to add up to the return on investment of the business. But if you are only concerned or if we are only concerned about measuring the business ROI, then we may not, we may forget to also measure our impact on people. And we won't know if we're having a negative impact or a positive impact. So yes, by all means, we need to be business savvy. We need to understand, you know, business, but we also need to be careful so that we don't fall into the trap of just caring about the business. We also want to care about the customers. We also want to focus. We don't want to lose that focus for the customers, right? Uh, business outcomes are usually short-term and UX outcomes are more long-term and look at the end-to-end -end customer journeys. So if we're able to zero in into the different parts of the journey and we're able to look for opportunities, business opportunities, opportunities for impact, right? We're able to pay more attention because we understand what the business is looking for, what the goals of the business are. And so when we're able to translate that into good UX outcomes and we're looking at the entire end-to-end -end thing, we are able to 
we have that at the back of our mind. And so we're able to look for more opportunities or more um, chances to you know, provide like more impact to the business. So let's talk about impact. I've been saying impact, 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 impact. <laughs> but let's talk about impact. Um, there are two types. So we have direct impact and we have indirect impact, right? And this is how design can impact the business and how we can measure our impact, right? So direct impact is when you're able to draw a direct correlation and causation between your work and saving or making money for the business, right? It is often not dependent on anything, right? Um, so think about it as when you're able to make design decisions, product decisions that either makes more money for the company or saves money for the company or for the business, right? Um, indirect impact is when the impact is dependent on something else, right? So a good way to think about it is the if then statement, right? So for example, if we're able to increase word of mouth, right and improve our net promoter score then this could lead to an increase in sales and reduce marketing costs now you've not necessarily impacted the business directly in terms of saving money you know or making money but you have impacted the business in other ways like improving net promoter you know score like how improving the happiness of customers, you know, using your products. And that could lead to an increase in sales, right? They would become evangelists for your products, right? And they're able to tell their friends, tell their colleagues, tell people around them. And, you know, they um, come and they use your product, right? And that at the end of the day increases your sales and reduces your marketing cost, like, that's a no brainer, right? There's no company that doesn't want to reduce their marketing costs and increase their sales. That's like a sweet, a sweet deal. Now, um, I have something from Design Designer Fund and it's called the 20 Levers Framework, right? And this is how design can make or save money for a business. So it's divided, it is divided into four quadrants. Um, you have direct impact, you have indirect impact, and then you have save money, you have make money, right? On that direct impact and indirect impact. And I'm going to show you examples of how companies have used this um, 20, 20 level framework to you know, impact their business. Designers have used this to impact their business or the design team have used this. Now for indirect impact to save money, you focus on sales and marketing as designers, right? We can impact sales and marketing, support and service, development and IT, HR and operations, right? You can come up with um, solutions or ideas that can save money by tackling any of these areas, right? For example, remember what we looked at here, we said if we improve our net promoter score, then we could lead to an increase in sales and reduce marketing costs. That is a direct impact of saving money here, right? Um, for making money, sales, the direct impact on sales, conversion, growth, new value, right? New opportunities to make money, a new product line, a new um, service, you know, that you offer, things like that. Retention, right? So um, if you work on redesigning a checkout flow, for example, for an e-commerce product, right? It is obviously going to increase sales because you have now a lot more people successfully checking out and buying stuff and paying for stuff, right? If you make the search um, easy in an e-commerce product, for example, people are able to search better and find what they want and they're able to buy more things, right? That's sales, right? If you're able to improve your onboarding and your sign-up process, it means people are able to onboard, sign up and onboard faster on your products. And that is, you know, um, a no-brainer to the company, right? It helps them make money. Retention, people, are, people love your product so much, people see value in it that they keep, you know, coming back, right? So you're giving your customers what they need to 
make an impact in their lives or to solve their problems or to achieve their goals, right? So yeah, you can make money in, you can, you can the, the impact of design in terms of helping the company make money can be felt in these areas, right? Um, indirect impacts, you have maintenance, bugs and errors, training time, collaboration, internal tools, processes, right? You can help the company save money. So for example, when you have a self-explanatory onboarding flow, right? Or onboarding system for customers on your product, they do not need a lot of time learning how to use your products, right? They do not need to call customer support, you know, and so you're sort of helping the business save money because it means that the business does not have to hire so much support team, right? And that is an impact, right? Um, making money, you have satisfaction, you have NPS, net promoter score, you have brand perception, you have usability, you have engagement. So when, let's say you, you're designing something and you want to make sure that usability is as simple and as seamless as it can be, right? And when it is as simple and as seamless as it can be, then people can use it easily to achieve their goals. And that is more money for the business or the company, right? And so let me um, quickly show you some examples of companies that use this. So this is um, a company called Plaid. And this is how Plaid, Plaid sort of redesigned their onboarding. Um, and this is how they were able to, in, the design team was able to impact the business, right? So they helped the business save money in terms of support and service. So people were able to onboard seamlessly on Plaid. And so there was no need to reach out to customer support a lot, right? And so they reduced their customer support team, right? Make money, conversion, and new value. Now people were able to successfully onboard right and start using the product that is conversion people paid their subscriptions you know and that's money right they were able to make more money new value they figured out new features that they added and it helped you know um, attracted more customers and so they made money right um in an indirect impact that it had is brand perception right so they probably got more market share because people now felt like they were the go-to brand for whatever it is that they do, right? Um, the next people who use this same um, framework is Pinterest, right? Pinterest redesigned their mobile um, app, I think their mobile review for the web. And so this is how they were able to, you know, the design team was able to make impacts the area, the design team were able to make impact. So one is growth and conversion. So you had more people using Pinterest, right? You had more people signing up and using Pinterest and you had, you know, more people probably saving, creating more pins. I mean, it depends on what they define those to be, right? You also need to be able to define this uh, metrics that you can track, right? So maybe for growth, it, they defined um, what growth meant to them is the number of boards created um, on Pinterest. And so maybe they saw a, a million plus additions of boards created when they pushed out this redesign, right? And that's making money for them. You also have the indirect impact design team had, you know, in business. One is process, second is collaboration, right? You also have the indirect impact of usability, right? So people, were able to use the product better and more efficiently and more effectively. All right, so let's go back. Now, um, we've, we've talked about all this, right? But it is very important to mention that without metrics, right? Without tracking, without metrics, you can't even know how you're performing. You can know how you're doing. Um, you can't track your impact to business. You won't even know the impact that you're having to good business and your customers. And so it is very important that for everything that you're working on, every project, every um, feature, you know, every service, you need to be able to figure out what success means and how you're going to measure and how you're going to um, track, right? 
Um, this is called the Hat Framework. And this is, this was popularized by Google. This was actually, I think, created by Google. And this is how they measure or they track. So they track happiness, they track engagement, they track adoption, they track retention, and they track task success, right? And so for happiness, you can have different goals. You can have signals, you can have metrics. So goals are what's, uh, what are the goals, right, for us? maybe as a business in terms of happiness, what are the goals for customers in terms of happiness, right? Um, signals are things that you see happening that lets you know if you are on track to meeting your goals, right? The things you see happening. So you can define those things as well and say, hey, if we see um, 23 people daily, then it means that we are on track, things like that, right? And then metrics, are specific things that you want to track that shows you if you're making progress or not, right? So signals feed into your metrics. Um, so yeah, you can you can split up. Uh, you can decide that hey, the metrics you want to track is happiness and the things you want to track is happiness, engagement, adoption, retention, you know, task um, task um, success, and you can figure out the different goals for each of this, right? And then you can also figure out what are the things that when we see happening it means that we are on track right and then we want to measure so if you want to say um we want to have um let's say at the moment we have 12 percent retention but we want to have 20 percent or we want to have 15 percent right in by the end of this month right that is a three percent increase in retention, right? So what are the things, that's the goal, right? So what are the signals? What are the things that you see? Um, it lets us know that, hey, we're on track to meeting this goal, right? And then you want to measure, what, what are the things that we're going to measure? So we're going to measure people who log in, right? Returning users, people who log in or people who use a specific feature, right? And using a specific feature, will mean retention for us. Or retention can be people who renew their subscriptions, right? That could mean retention for us. So you want to see how many people repaid, I mean, renewed their subscription for the month, right? And then you track that. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm wrapping up so that we can have some time for questions and answers and clarifications, right? Um, now, very important, and I've been saying this from the beginning, you need to make sure that you are in alignment, right? You understand what the business is looking for, what the business is out for, what the business is trying to achieve, to be able to impact or contribute to it, right? And so one, I have two ways here that, um, you can have better alignment between teams and stakeholders, so between the design team and the business team, right? One is work together to develop a shared understanding of the problem being solved and who you're solving for. This is really important and that everybody is able to speak one language and everybody understands why you know, we're doing what we're doing or why they're doing what they're doing, right? Um, the second is make sure outcomes support both business and user goals, right? So you want to make sure that when you are defining your outcomes, when you're defining your goals, it supports, it makes sense, right? It, it's, it's a value and meaning to both, you know, the business and the customers or the users. And so I'm going to leave us with one final, this brief paragraph, I guess, but consider this my last words. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to us. Uh, the opportunities designers have in today's marketplace are robust. Traditional for-profit companies are transitioning from purely financial priorities to customer first, right? Non-profit or government organizations are transitioning from economic models to more community and citizen-led models, right? And designers have been asked to participate in these transformations, right? In startups, you know, in big um, organizations, right? And business aware designers have the ability to influence outcomes in ways no other function can because 
we are the voice of the customers. We are the bridge, right, between the business and the customers. And so we are able to influence the goals and the outcomes for both parties in ways that no other function can, right? Um, and we have the power to impact the professional and personal worlds we want to live in. The next step for designers is to go beyond having a seat at the table to being a leader at the table. With our influence, we can build healthier societies through healthier businesses. But we must know business to begin with. So we must know all the terminologies, we must know all the languages of business, we must know all the um, things that business cares about, right? For us to be able to make that change and be that change that we want to see as designers in companies, in teams, and in the world. Uh, this is an excerpt from Envision's Business Thinking for Designers. It is a really good resource. I would recommend it for everyone who wants to go really deeper into um, being better designers, right? Into understanding business and design. It is a very, very great resource. And it's not that long. It's just 150 pages, I think, but very interesting and will keep you glued till you finish it. So yeah, um, thank you so much for listening. Um, this is where I wrap up. This is where I stop and take questions um, <laughs> or clarify um, <laughs> as need maybe. So yeah, thanks guys. I think uh, I have to go get the last part of the presentation where we talked about the utmost skill that you know designers should have. And they should at least know to understand and make that change along with the you know user goals plus the business goals. And that mm -hmm. that's the complete puzzle, and you know, that's the entire picture that you've painted. So that was really, really uh, insightful, and I really love the presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Think, uh, we we have one question for now in the QA session. Uh, people, you can add more questions. We have him for more than 15 minutes. So it's it's around the, uh, the question is from Vivek. He wants to understand that uh, he's a engineering dropout and he's learning more and more about UI UX design, but he's scared uh, if he'll get a job in the UI UX industry. Uh, definitely, you will get a job. <laughs> I don't think you should. I mean, I don't think you should be scared. Um, every day, more companies are looking for designers, right? Um, more people are building companies. And I, I don't think the demand for designers is going to go down anytime soon, right? The demand for designers is going to go, it's going to keep um, increasing and increasing. Um, and I think the best time to be a designer is now. Maybe the best time, the better time was yesterday, but the best time is now, right? There are a lot of opportunities. There are a lot of resources. Um, that there's a lot of help, you know, in terms of wonderful communities around, um, wonderful people who have had long lasting careers and are now trying to help, you know, more newer designers shorten their their journey, right? So yeah, I would say that you will definitely get a job. You just need to hone your skills, um, get better at it, and definitely you will get a job and you can, hey, you can make a career out of this, right? I mean, there are people doing it, so can you. So uh, are you from a design background or like you studied something and gradually like moved your career, changed your career to design? Yeah, um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I learned graphics design, um, but it was for fun. I never really made any money with it. Um, I learned from a friend. Um, but we did have a, so I am Igbo, um, a tribe in Nigeria, and we are generally known for being business-minded people. Right. So um, growing up, my family had 
like three businesses. You know, my mom had her own business. My dad had his own business. And then we also had like a business that was run by both my mom and dad. Right? So it was like a family thing. So um, right from, right from, you know, my childhood, I was, <laughs> I was doing business, I guess. Right. Um, <laughs> so it just, it, it um, when I, I mean, when, when I, when, when I was done with school, you know, it was time to look for a job and things like that. And so I was looking for some extra skills um, and I wanted to learn front end at the time, right? But then I met a, um, a mentor and we talked about, you know, my background and he got to find out that I had like some graphics design background or knowledge. And he was like, hey, why don't you try product design? Um, and you also have business, you have like a sound business background, and I think you would do really well as a product designer, so you should give it a shot. And, um, you know, I checked out product design, and I've been doing product design ever since. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, we have one more question. <clears throat> it's around, I have a bachelor's in business administration, <clears throat> sorry, and I have work experience in finance, but I am now making a switch to UX as I feel my skills are more inclined to this field. Any suggestions on how I can use my past uh, work experience and background effectively in UX, considering many in UX field are from engineering? Hey, so I think you are, I mean, for the most part, right, you already understand business. Right, you understand how business is run, you understand what drives a business, you know, you understand how business is managed. I think that has already given you an edge in a way, right? And so I think you can use that to set yourself um, apart, right? And have that as your unique value, right? You want to focus on um when, when, when you're speaking to businesses or you're, you're selling yourself, right, you want to focus on how your understanding of business, right, can basically impact the company, right? So you're not just coming with a design mindset and you're just coming with a creative mindset, but you also understand that money needs to be made and you, you also understand how you can use design or you can make um, sound design decisions, you know, Work, look for design solutions that can contribute right to that so i think you already have a unique selling point and you just need to find a way to tell that story in a way that it is captivating and very interesting and i think you'll stand out uh, we don't have any further questions as of now if anyone has any more questions we have him for five more minutes. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, you like as I mentioned in your introduction, uh, that you you know you run your own, uh, you're a co-founder at what's the pron correct pronunciation of that? It's Spire. No, it's Spire. So it's it's spelled S P A. Ah. Y A so Spire okay. that's how it's pronounced. Ah, nice. Cool. <laughs> so yeah. it's like you run a uh, you run an agency of designers, like, and you work with different companies. No, it's it's not an agency. It's a it's a customer experience platform actually, or startup actually, and um. Okay. We'll, yeah, so we're building products that enable businesses, customers, and individuals to, you know, connect more with their customers, get direct feedback from their customers, um, carry out research. So um, at the moment, we have something called Spire Feedback, and we have something called Spire Discovery. Spire Feedback is a tool that businesses use to collect um, passive feedback or active feedback from their customers. So if you're using a product and you're stuck, mm -hmm. you can um, send a voice or a video recording, or you can take a screenshot of what is wrong and you can send that in as feedback, right? Um, Spire Discovery on the other hand is sort of like user testing, but for Nigeria or Africa, 
Yeah, if that makes sense. Okay, uh, there is one question which we have. It's around what what if you find yourself in a situation where the user needs isn't in alignment with the business objectives. Right. This is this is very tricky <laughs> and very interesting. Um, before, right, a lot of companies would have been more insistent on driving um, work done, right, or driving solutions with what the, what, what the business goal is. But I think we've, in recent times, especially because of companies like, you know, Apple, um, Amazon, ETC, we've seen a turn in that um, um, behavior, right? So now companies inform their solution or companies allow customers to sort of drive their solution or you know their offerings or their value right so in a situation like this i think it depends on the understanding of the people who are at the helm of affairs right because if you try to make a case you know as to why um these are the customer needs and this is why it's important for us to go this route right this is the value that it provides to the business right if they don't see the sense in that well, at the end of the day you're in business to make money right and i mean money money is primary every other thing is secondary right at the end of the day so if you are able to paint a picture as to why this user needs should be what we should focus on and this is how it is going to impact the business i don't think there's anybody or any business that would say no to that because at the end of the day it gives them money right where it might be a bit dicey is if they can't see the money or the value to the business then that is when it's a bit dicey right but if they can see the value or the money it is trust me the business objectives are very flexible it is going to change right so much that right and so um, if you try that and it doesn't work, even when they see the value and the money, I don't know, I guess it might be time for a change of company. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Well, yeah, I think it might be time to just go to a place that values customers more and user needs more, right? And you might just be in a, um, uh, something we say in Nigeria, organ-centered business basically a business driven by the owner and the owner alone. So if it is not the idea of CEO, then we're not doing it, right? And I don't think companies, especially companies that are serving people should be run that way. So uh, I hope that gives you a bit of clarity to your question. <laughs> no, I think that's rightly you suggested, but like at any point if the business is benefiting from it and um, you know at the back of your head that it, it aligns with the user goals, then no business is going to say no. Else, there, yeah. that's a great option. The company, you should change the company. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have one last question. It's around, could you suggest some podcast or uh, YouTube channels that you follow to keep yourself updated with business aspects of design? Oh, um... There are a lot, actually. Uh, but yeah, um, InVision is a very good um, place to start. Um, I read a lot of their books. Um, I read a lot of their blog posts. Um, Intercom has a pretty interesting blog. Um, blog, you know. So I, I read a lot of their blog posts. Um, Designers Fund. It's so designers fund the F U N D is also like a very very good place um, for podcasts. Uh, I will have to open my so let me just open Google Podcast and let's see that you can see what I've been listening to. So. 
right? Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, so we have Inside Intercom. Inside Intercom is a great um, podcast. I have the diary of a CEO. Um, you have, so this is for open source. Uh, this, the MBA. So this is design MBA. The only thing they do here is talk about design and business. And they also have a course as well. You can, you can take their course. It is really, really, really interesting, really informative, really great for anybody who is looking to level up their business um, knowledge, right? Uh, I have, uh, let's see, what else? I have design life. I have design details. I have, um mixed methods i have the mobile user acquisition show i have dollars donuts this is also very interesting um i have what else um i have masters of skill this is really interesting as well um you have design notes as well very interesting i have how i built this very very interesting i have designed better so like there's a lot but <laughs> uh you can you can make your pick and you know you can start listening to them i also have method podcast from the google team so yeah uh, there's this there's this book uh so actually we are also you know building a new course on a business of design because uh, since one part of our audience are also, uh, you know, users are also design professionals. So they want to understand more about it or for freelancers or anyone who wants to, you know, take this part seriously. So there's a book I was going through and it was around, uh, just a second. It's around the business of design, balancing creativity and profitability by Keith Granite. It's a really good book. Yeah. I should check that out. <laughs> I will just share the book. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Do we have I any more questions? We don't have any more questions. Thank you so much, okay. Kota, for uh, the for the session and in talking about the part which I always want to speak to my team or someone I work with how important it is to understand the time we are investing, the resources we are investing and the impact they're going to have on the business. Then you spoke it out every day. Thank you so much for doing Thank this you. with us. Thank you for having me. It was great um, being here. Thank you. It was so much fun. <laughs> I also learned a lot just, you know, preparing my slides. So, yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks for joining in. And once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have a good rest of the day.